Our next guest has not one, but two iconic TV roles. Steve Schrippera is play, playing major roles on the HBO series The Sopranos, also playing a detective on Blue Bloods, which surpassed the 53 episodes he did on The Sopranos. Yeah, Schrippera's got a new book out, which is number six on the New York Times bestseller list, The Definitive, the definitive Oral History of The Sopranos. Woke up this morning. Steve's in the house. Uh, Steve, good to see you here on a Friday. You brought the book with you. I know a lot of folks are excited to see you this morning here on a, on a Friday. I, I'm just curious, when we see this book, and there's such a fascination um, with The Sopranos. It's an iconic show. People don't forget it. People re-watch this show. It's been off the air, I think, for now 15 years. Yeah. But it's not, uh, not out of the hearts and minds of so many. What was it about this series that just resonated with so many people? You know, I, I think it's because it's about a family. And it's, first of all, it's so well written. It's funny. It's tragic. It's sad. Uh, but it's so well written. And so many people now, younger people, are watching it. Kids in their teens, their 20s, have discovered the show. Their parents watched it. They were too young. Yeah. It's bigger than ever. Yeah. Bigger than ever right now. It's all over the world. It's streaming all over the world. Back then, only 11 million people had HBO. Now, I don't know how many millions are watching it. You know? Yeah, now you got the digital platforms now, HBO Max. You, I mean, you can get this on your phone here as we see some of the cast and stars there, Gandolfini and so many of them. Yeah, and talk to me about those moments. As you recall back, now I'm sure in the book you kind of take a look back in time there, but what really stands out to you when you're actually filming on the set, from the characters to the actors, behind the scenes? Well, you know, the book comes out of the podcast. So we hadn't seen the show in since it ended and the beginning. You know, I haven't watched the show really in 20 years. We went back to watch mm -hmm. them. And uh, what gets me, uh, it's, it was f funnier than I ever remembered, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And also, when I was doing the show, I was so worried about them killing me off. <laughs> that, that, that I couldn't relax. <laughs> this wasn't friends. Like, yeah. you know, they weren't going to kill Joey, you know what I mean? Yeah. Though they probably should have. But, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know, this was, you know, so you, did, you weren't relaxed when you were doing it. Now you sit back and you realize, boy, I was part of something that is absolutely brilliant. And the thing of all, I, the first time around the Melfi stuff, when Tony Soprano went to the psychiatrist, I, I, that bored me. Uh, but now that I'm older, yeah. I kind of understand it a whole lot more, you know, and I, and I find it fascinating and, and I, I love those sessions. So it's, yeah. you know, uh, like I said, I'm enjoying it, watching it from a distance. You know, you know, we talk about we talk about the show and just how, how unbelievably popular it was. And, and, and honestly, when it went off the air, people didn't get over it. It was like a breakup. I mean, this was yeah. heart wrenching. People couldn't move on to another show. Um, it, but I want to talk to you about what happens off screen, if I can. And if you want to share it, is that in your book? Because it does take and as you know, as, uh, as so much of your roles have uh, so many roles you've had, um, there's got to be chemistry offset to make Product, uh, products or oh yeah we were, we work. were you know we became like seriously like a family i mean you know listen you go to work most shows you're on or even a movie you're yeah. friends with them for the course of the movie and, and or, or another tv show and your friends and respect each other and then you go home i mean here we all kind of hit at the same time and we literally were like a family and we were in new york city and we were like playing for the Yankees. I mean, we were running around. Yeah, it's all in the book. I mean, you know, it's, we were running around, we were drinking. We enjoyed every single moment uh, of this new fame or whatever you want to yeah. call it. Suddenly we had some money and some fame that, you know, I that lived, hurt. I grew up in Brooklyn. I grew up dirt poor and I moved to Vegas. And when I came back here, I enjoyed New York so much more. I mean, I had money and, uh, you know, a little bit of fame, and it was just a, just a lot of fun, man. And, and it's been a great ride. Yeah. You know? uh, and the recognition, of course, I'm sure you've heard from fans that they'd love to see more of the show. Recently, there have been a lot of uh, show reunions or even remakes. Any talks about that? About that? Uh, you know, I don't know. We had David Chase on the podcast, and he said he doesn't, he's not sure if he wants to do anything again. But listen, you know, does, don't they keep, Star Wars keeps popping up everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I've never. I, I've never seen Star Wars. I swear. I might be the only guy in the world. You got a lot to catch up on. That, so there's like there's like 18 of those movies, yeah, though, right? You know, but you know what I mean. So who knows? I mean, yeah. people are fascinated with the mob. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, it's kind of the modern day Western. And a lot of younger people, like I said, are watching this. Of course, it holds up like it was written today, you know. We're seeing some pictures too, Blue Bloods as well. Talk to me about there that. There you go, that's tonight's show. I, like I got it. a big show tonight. All right, tell me more about this. Uh, this is uh, me and Donnie Warburg, who don't usually get along. He's uh, Danny Reagan. And my cousin, uh, guy playing my cousin, right, right, right. Anthony DeSando, who's great, uh, he does some bad things. So uh, we rough him up a little and a uh, little yeah. unorthodox. And usually me and uh, Donnie Wahlberg's character don't get along. But tonight we get along and uh, hopefully solve it. Sounds there we go. good. Let's it's, a, well it's a great, <laughs> Blue Bloods is an absolute great show. Tom Selleck's great, Bridget Moynihan, Donnie, mm -hmm. the whole cast. And I've been on the show seven seasons, mm -hmm. and I couldn't uh, be happier, you know, landing on a show in New York and on this show. You well, you, you talk about The Sopranos having a family-like feel as well. Have you noticed that for all of the shows you've worked on, or does it take a certain cast to really create that you relationship? Know, I think it was, you know, I guess it kind of depends. You know, your age, you know, like I, I worked on a high school show with Molly Ringwall, and they were all younger people, so, mm. you know, yeah. they were all friendly, it was mm. great, but you know what I mean? Now we're a little older on Blue Bloods, everyone's got families. I think, I think The Sopranos just kind of hit at the right time. We were, mm. you know, running around, but for the most part, uh, I've had nothing but great experiences with actors. Yes, there's yeah. an ass once in a while, and you yeah. got to straighten them out. Not on Blue Bloods, uh, but yeah. once in a while. <laughs> yeah, you've got to say Blue that because you're still but... shooting your show. <laughs> um, i got to ask you this, uh, because I know viewers are going to want to know this, and it may be in your book. Uh, James Gondolfini, what was it like working with him? What was he like? Listen, he was a great guy. A great, great guy. A very generous guy. Uh, not without faults, which has been public. You know, Jim's had, had some problems, you know. But he was generous. He was nothing like Tony Soprano. He wore Birkenstocks. He was a big music lover. He's like kind of a, uh, an overweight hippie, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you know, he was very generous, like, with work. You sure? You're happy? You want another take? He watched out for you. Like, uh, we tell a story, Robert Isla, who played his son, AJ, they wanted him to shave his eyebrows. And uh, the kid was going to do it. And then and Jim said... You know, sometimes they don't grow back, you know. You better think about this. So he was like an advisor. And I've talked about how he gave each one of us $33,000, $33,333 each as a gift for sticking by him during a contract dispute. Uh, he, we found out after he passed away, he paid off people's mortgages, gave them money. A police officer in New Jersey passed away of cancer. His wife somehow contacted Jim and said, my husband was your, your biggest fan. And Jim went to the funeral wow. all by himself. That's the kind of guy he was. But like I said, not perfect, yeah. but who is? Hey, and no one at this table, or at least I'll speak for myself, Emma might be, but... Uh, I'm with you. Are you yeah. perfect, Emma? No. You're perfect. I play one on TV. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, watch your Instagram on the weekends. Uh, Steve Sharipa, how can we find more about you and more about the book real quick for you? Go. Well, you know, we have the podcast. It's coming to an end, Talking Sopranos. Uh, go to so talkingsopranos.com. We have some live shows. Me and Michael Imperioli do. And the book uh, is doing great, great Christmas. If you're a Soprano fan... Mm. Yeah. You gotta have the book. All right, I'm gonna buy it for my family. I might just take the I'll copy give you that you got. Give me the oh. a gift is you gotta, oh. get Steve you to just, sign it for you. You just saved twenty nine dollars. Don't don't tell my mom I got her <laughs> gift. I bought it. I promise I did. Steve Shrip, a good, always a pleasure. Good to see you Hopefully guys. Always see you around the city sometimes. Yes. Yep. All right. We will Thank indeed. you. Indeed. Thank you. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel, now in more than seventy million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system does doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.